Okay, we're going to be looking in this video, and we're looking at in this video, how to make how to make the transformation uh, in our identity. How is it that we're going to transform our identity to a person who stutters, who gets stuck here, who's not able to do this, who wasn't able to do that, to someone who's more confident, who's able to speak well whenever they want, who's able to say whatever they need to say when they need to say it. How do we transform this identity? How do we change how we play the roles? How do we transform our identity, right? Or how do we change how we play our roles? Isn't that the question? How do we do it? How do we do it? Well, what we have to do, I'm going to give you basically three or four things. One, we see it, we say it, we do it, and then there's a final one that's kind of related to do it. So what do I mean by see it, say it, do it? You begin to picture yourself playing this role in a new way. So in other words, in your mind, you start to see yourself speaking well as a parent, as a child, as a student, as an employee, right, in social situations, uh, in community situations. You begin to actually imagine yourself, to literally start to dream of yourself speaking well in those situations. You picture yourself acting that way. Why is this important? Why does it work? It's important to do because we often picture ourselves uh, failing or getting stuck or acting this way. We often replay situations that have happened so we're using the power of imagination, the power of visualization, the power of using our mental movies, if you will, we often use that against ourselves. So what we want to do is we want to use it for, right? We want to use it in a constructive manner. So what you do is you see yourself actually performing using this, this new role or see yourself performing in a different way in your current role. Sometimes we have to actually create new roles. But sometimes we can play the same role, we just have to play it differently. So you have to picture yourself literally playing the role differently. So rather than seeing yourself get stuck, you see yourself responding smoothly. Talk to someone today and going to order coffee uh, usually gets stuck on this one word, frappuccino. So we talked about how to kind of work through that and so forth. So now if this client starts to see himself walking in, ordering a frappuccino and doing it successfully, as well as doing something else that we're going to talk about, this person is going to gradually, if not immediately, start to speak well when it goes in the order frappuccino. What else? Say it. Affirmations. But not just affirmations. Uh, I'm an excellent speaker, or I always speak well in this situation. We're talking about affirmations with enthusiasm and emotion. I'm an excellent speaker. I always speak well when I conduct these meetings. I always speak well on phone calls. I always say my email address smoothly and fluently. I always order coffee well. Right? Very specific affirmations. So you say it. You see it. You say it. Why do we say it? We say it, once again, because often we say, well, and I hear people say this all the time, I can't say this, or I always get stuck on this. I always get stuck on this word. So what are they doing? It's a negative affirmation. It's like, like a reverse affirmation. So they're saying, I can't, and I always. What we're saying is now you want to say, I always speak well in this situation. I, I always say, uh, my email is, I always answer the phone smoothly. Now someone says, well, I tried that and I, then I still don't do it. Well, we also have to do this here. So you see it, 
you say it, and you have to say it with enthusiasm, and you have to say it every day, and you have to sprinkle these affirmations throughout your day, and then you also have to go out and do it, right? That means that you take action. So let's say speaking on the phone is a struggle. The only way you can get over that is you're going to have to get out there and, and one of my clients says he, he makes it a game. He actually looks at uh, getting on the telephone or doing Skype sessions, as, which he used to avoid. He makes it a game, and a challenge, and he now looks forward to it and he has fun. Do you think it went smoothly for him the first time or every time? No. But the more he did it, the smoother it got. And the more he looked at it like a challenge, so he looked forward to making phone calls. He just started finding people that he could call to make phone calls. And now he's speaking quite smoothly. Is it perfect? Probably, it's probably not perfect, but now he enjoys doing it. You see the difference? So now it's no longer something where he's anxious, but he actually enjoys doing it. So you have to get out there and do the thing that maybe made you anxious before. But what else do you need to do? Practice. So if you're working through this process, which I believe you are if you're watching this video, then each week you should be spending time literally uh, pre presenting one of the steps, right? Presenting one of the steps. So this week we are in, just looking back, we are in week three. So this week, you should be either on step one or possibly step two, and you should be practicing this uh, at least four times a week, four to six hours per week, right? So you're practicing these pieces, memorizing the content, micro modeling, that is studying my videos and audios through intensive observation, but also micro modeling, picking 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and trying to master that so that you can give that whole presentation as if you were me, right? As if you were me. And when you do this practice every day or every week, what's going to happen is your, your speech is going to gradually begin to change because you're going to start developing a new speaking style, okay? You're going to start developing a new speaking style. So what else do you have to do? You have to get out there and practice these presentations and if you have presentations that you have to do at work, use the same process. Think about what you need to say, go over it in your mind, practice using a new style, and then just get out there and do it. So what if you do it a little better than you did before? That's a little better than you did before. So then get out there and try to do it a little better the next time. And keep. don't focus on, oh, I, you know, I thought all of this was going to work, and uh, you know, let's say it's a 15-minute presentation and you only did three minutes well or five minutes well. I thought I was supposed to be able to do the whole thing well. This takes time. You and I are not meant to be transformed overnight or even in five or ten days or sometimes in 30 days depending on what we're doing. So take your time. If you're doing it well five minutes longer than what you did before, that's an improvement. Celebrate that and continue to work and push it to six or eight or ten minutes, right? And just keep working on that, eventually you'll get to the whole 15 minutes. How do I know that? Because you got to the 5 minutes. However you got to the 5 minutes, you're going to be able to get to the 10 and the 15. So you have to practice. You also have to get out there and challenge yourself. And we'll talk about this in another session in another week, the importance of literally challenging yourself. But I'll just say that that's very important. So you see it. You think about it. Now this isn't just, we're not just talking about visualizing, oh, okay, I heard that before, affirmations, I heard that before. No. This stuff is critical. Why is it critical? Once again, I know I'm repeating myself, but I have to because you already do it. We already say, I, I can't do this or I always get stuck on that. We already think about, oh, man, I just really messed that one up, right? We just think about it. Sometimes we don't see it clearly, but in our mind, we're thinking about it. We're seeing it. We're saying it. And then sometimes we go out and we either don't do it. So we're going to use these three skills, if you will, these three skills to work for you as opposed to working against you. Now, does, does, does that make sense? Okay. So in this fourth one, 
you might have to limit your involvement with certain people. If there are people, family included, who are saying, oh, I don't, I don't you know, you shouldn't speak that way, that just, that sucks, or I don't know why you're trying to speak like that, then you need to limit your involvement with that person. You need to build kind of a, a buffer zone that limits your involvement with that person until you get to the place where this is something that you feel more comfortable with, something that's more automatic. So you might have to build enough momentum that pushes you through any kind of criticism that you may get from family or friends. Now sometimes this criticism is perceived. You think people are going to think a certain thing and they're actually not. They're, they're actually thinking the opposite. They actually want for you the opposite. It, sometimes it's you that's holding yourself back by thinking, remember I said that sometimes we think that others perceive us in a certain way. Right? So sometimes it's us thinking that someone thinks of us in a certain way and they really are not. So what we have to do is we may have to, we may have to actually check that and say, okay, if I start using this new style, what will people actually say? And if people are saying something negative or criticizing you, then we have to limit your involvement. You have to do it. There's no other way. Or you can talk to them and you can explain to them, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. I would appreciate your support. If they want to give it to you, awesome. If they don't, you still have to do it. Okay, you have to do it or else you're going to limit yourself or stop yourself. I've seen it happen. Four things that you can do, four steps to change or to transform your identity or change how you're playing those roles that we talked about. See yourself playing the role differently, right? Just how often should you do this? As often as possible. Daily. It doesn't have to take long. It take a minute or two. Three times a week. Three or four times a week. Minimum, I'd say four times a week. Four times a week seems to be the optimal and the minimum time if you want to see an increase in your performance. If you do something less than four times a week, some time it doesn't take. So you really need to do something four times a week. Three times can work, but four times is better. All right? So how do we do this? We see it. We think about it. Visualize it. Imagine it. Dream about it. You say it. Right? And you also stop saying things like, I can't or I always do this if it's negative. I always get stuck on this. I, I always speak well on that. We say that. We say a more positive, constructive affirmation using the what? 3P formula. 3P formula. And we do it. We get out there and we do what? We practice, right? Practice those presentations. That's what's building your new speaking style. The second thing is you push yourself, right? Make it a game or a challenge to talk on the phone, to go order coffee, to do whatever. You push yourself, you make it a game. So you practice and you push yourself. If you don't, it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna work, okay? And then fourth, if you have to, you limit your involvement with people who are not supporting you. And often they will come around after a while. Okay. I know that this has been helpful. I usually say I hope this has been helpful, uh, but I know this has been helpful because I know that you're going to need this information as you're working through this process. Some of you will not. Some of you are not going to have any problems though. Others of you will. Because remember, you're going to need to change your identity sometimes, not just for other people, but for yourself. You're going to be seeing yourself in a certain way and you're not going to want to make that transition, that transformation. It's just going to feel uncomfortable, so you're going to have to transform your identity for yourself. There may not be other people out there who you might be thinking about, well, how do they think about me? Or someone might say, well, I don't like the way. That might not be happening. It might be just you saying, oh, I don't like how that feels. That feels uncomfortable. So you're going to have to do this for yourself. All right? Great. 
I will then see you in the next video. Please take this information, think about it, ponder it, and notice that as you develop your new speaking style, if any of this is happening to you, and now you'll know what you need to do. You'll have the exact steps and strategy that you need to follow. And this isn't something you just do once. You have to do this every day. Literally, you have to do it every day. Okay? See you in the next video.